This is episode 250 of the Beyond the Food Show. And today we are exploring the black outfit concept and how women are asked to take less space. Stay tuned. Welcome to the Going Beyond the Food Show. I'm Stephanie Dodier, clinical nutritionist and certified intuitive eating counselor, creator of the Going to Beyond the Food method. And after a 25 year dieting career that started at the age of 12, I decided to say hell no to diet culture and hell yes to living my life to the fullest in my now body. And I made it my mission to help smart, successful women like you live confidently, unconditionally right now. Ready, sister? Let's do this. Hey, if you're new to the Going Beyond the Food show, our podcast roadmap has been designed with you in mind. With over 250 episodes available to listen, it can feel overwhelming to know which episode to prioritize for you. The podcast guide answers the top five questions women have when they enter our world of going beyond the food to unlearn diet culture. To get your free copy of our podcast roadmap guide, head over to stephaniedoziate.com forward slash roadmap or use the hyperlink in the show notes. I'll see you on the other side. Hello, sisters. Welcome back. Hope you're ready for this one. Now, I want to declare this before we move forward. This podcast is for all the women, all the people who have been socialized as women, women in larger body, women in thinner body, women of any body size. What makes this podcast relevant to anyone no matter which size of body you're in, is the belief that our body should be smaller, thinner, leaner, different in any shape or form than what it is right now. If that's you, the podcast episode is for you. I originally had this episode releasing later in October of this year, 2020, but something happened and something that I have to share with you first. In saying this, I have a big smile on my face. I don't know if this shows up in my voice, but this is what's happening. I'm a podcaster that listens to other people's podcasts. And one of these podcasts is called Unfuck Your Brain with a gal named Kara Lowenthal. Kara was introduced to me in the spring of 2019, has a potential guest on my podcast. So I did my due diligence. I listened to her podcast. And I fell in love with the woman. The episode we co-created together is 191. If you want to go back and listen, it's called Unfuck Your Brain to Be Confident. And if you haven't listened yet, it's going to kick your butt. But anyhow, I'm digressing right now. I was listening to her latest podcast, 147. There was a simple Q&A episode, very short, and she was answering a question from one of our students, a medical doctor, asking if it was possible to coach her patient into weight loss without activating shame. Now, background here, Kara is not an anti-diet practitioner. She does not teach intuitive eating or body acceptance. She's a life coach, and her podcast refers to that. So although she doesn't teach body acceptance or intuitive eating, Kara is in a larger body just like me. And she went all in on this listener's question. And just again, a little bit more background. If you don't listen to that podcast, Kara's podcast is a top 10 podcast in the world of self-development. She has a huge audience and What really excited me is he did not shy away from talking about fat phobia, health at every size, and how medical professional needs to rethink their entire approach to health and body weight. Here's a quote from the episode. We're so fucking indoctrinated by fat phobia to an extent that we don't realize it. We're not even conscious of the depth of this socialization pause. Let's all pause on this. I was so freaking inspired that I decided to bring this podcast, The Black Outfit, forward. 
because that is in perfect alignment to this beautiful context that Kara did on her podcast. So you ready? Let's do this. Do you have a black outfit in your closet? Do you perhaps have more than one black outfit and perhaps even one piece of every type of clothes you have in the black color? Do you wear black clothes as often, if not even more often than bright color clothes? Do you wear bright color clothes that have the potential of making you stand out in a crowd? Do you strategically plan the color of your clothes based on where you're going, perhaps because of who you will see, the potential of meeting new people, or knowing that certain people being present will make you feel judged in your body? Is wearing black clothes a problem? No. Black, red, blue, yellow. Colors are neutral. They mean nothing. Instead, it's about the intention. The intention that reside behind the choice of color you make. Why are you deciding to wear black clothes is where the juice is at. This is what this podcast is about. What is your intention when you decide to wear black clothes? Now, I want you to be honest with yourself. Why do you favor wearing black clothes? What are you trying to achieve by wearing black clothes? Now, I can't guess what's in your mind. All I can do is share my answer to these questions. My answer is almost the same as the one nearly all the women that have worked with. For those that are new to this podcast, I work with women who believe that their body is too big, was too big, too fat, too round, not lean enough, that they overthink everything about their body. That is until they go beyond the food and do their work with us. So my answer as to why I chose in the past to wear black outfit more often than any other color clothes is because I wanted to hide my body. I believed that my body was too much, that I was too much. I was hoping to make my body invisible, to make my quote, unconventional body, end of quote, appear smaller, to hopefully blend in and not stand out, that maybe other wouldn't see me taking as much space as I thought I did. Is that you? The black outfit title of this episode is really an analogy, an analogy for us not embracing our fullness, our fullness physically, but also our fullness emotionally, mentally, and even spiritually embracing who we are as women, who you are in your strength, who you are in your voice, in your being, and yes, in your body. For most of us as women, we have been trained to shrink ourselves, socialized to make ourselves smaller in all the way possible. In the obvious way that most of us are conscious of, which is making our body always smaller. So small that it's unachievable for 95% of women. And that's the obvious reason why you wear a black outfit. That's the reason that you're clearly conscious of. But being socialized to be smaller, wearing black outfits runs much deeper than our physical body. It's just the external representation of us believing that we need to be smaller. We've been trained to get ourselves smaller in many other aspects of our life to not voice our opinion because you may cause other people to disagree and that's inappropriate to have diverging opinion and especially sharing them because you may just get called mad <laughs> to be too emotional <laughs> because if you do, you may be just called crazy to cross our legs when sitting because we need to take less space or because if you don't, you'll be judged as too manly or quote, asking for it to not talk about our financial status and our ability to make money as women, but instead to always share how 
cheaper we got things. Now, notice the next time somebody gives you a compliment about the thing you bought, notice your knee-jerk reaction on how you got it on sale and sharing it with people to make sure they know. To not show our emotion because showing our emotion may result in us being told that we're wearing our emotion on our sleeves and that's not appropriate for women. So not embracing our fullness as women, wearing the black outfit to feel smaller, this programming, this socialization started very young. I don't know about you, but for me growing up, all I could ever see was tiny, tiny, tiny version of women's body. Because women taking space wasn't cool. Women were celebrated for taking less space. And it started with my Barbie with an unmeasurably tiny waist. And in my late teens, early 20s to Rachel and Monica on Friends, so tiny. And about the same time to Oprah dragging her trailer of fat on stage and making the headline across the world because she had made her body smaller. Where are you, my 90s girls? Is that resonating with you? Do you still remember these moments where you had the visual cue just like me that being smaller was the only way for you to go? And I almost forgot that quote from Kate Moss, which if you're not a 90s girl, Kate Moss was the supermodel, the ideal way a woman should be in the 90s. And her famous quote was, nothing tastes as good as skinny. Remember that one? (laughs) All of these repeated exposure to diet culture carves deep belief within us. Deep belief about what it means to be a woman, how we should behave, speak, express, and how our physical body should look like. These deeply held beliefs are sustained today in our mind with a collection of thought. And these thoughts are repeated on a loop unconsciously in our mind. And they're so deeply unconscious that we don't even know these thoughts and beliefs are there. These collection of thoughts that operate in the background of our mind, creating the action we express in our day-to-day life. Here's a few examples. Unconscious behavior like constantly checking ourselves in the mirror so that we can berage ourselves in our own mind. Pulling on our shirts so people don't notice our belly rolls. Constantly reminding ourselves dozens of times a day how much we should try to be smaller. Us not accepting people's compliment and instead verbalizing ourselves, putting our body down, suppressing our emotion and creating the need to numb ourselves because the pain and anxiety of suppressed emotion is so freaking painful to want to quit dieting, but to keep coming back at it because, quote, it doesn't work, that body acceptance thing. Unconscious behavior like knowing logically that diet culture is bad news, but we can't make it happen in real life. That's why we wear the black outfit to hide our body, to take less space because embracing our fullness as a woman is unacceptable. This is why it's causing you the black outfit to not enjoy your body and your life. Here's where it gets crazy. Ready for the ride? We have this duality in Western societies right now. On one side, society's aspiration for each and every individual to live a full life, to live life to the fullest, that everyone has the right to happiness and fulfillment. But on the other side, embracing your fullness and the fullness of life is not available to you if you aren't small and beautiful. That creates a tug of war within us a constant duality 
We want the big and the small at the same time. That is creating a tremendous amount of pain, frustration, and confusion. This constant duality message we are receiving is actually a trap. Because we can't aim to live a full life, yet at the same time wishing to be the smallest version of ourselves. Can you see the irony with me? <laughs> it's crazy. Yet, that's why million of us are stuck in diet culture. We're all trying to do this, keeping ourselves stuck in not feeling good about a body and living a half life. What happened when we decide to say no, no more to this BS. When we decide to embrace our fullness, when we decide to wear colorful clothes and take up our space, what happened when we stop trying to make ourselves smaller? Well, first, we feel aligned, aligned to our purpose as human, to enjoy life, to enjoy our body, and to experience this human experience on this hurt fully. Then we end up ending the duality, the internal fight that caused the mean girl's voice to constantly question, judge, and put everything down. And finally, we accept ourselves, who we are, because we are not our freaking body. No human is their body, not women nor men. Embracing our fullness is the way out of the black outfit. Naomi Wolf, the author of The Beauty Myth, has a beautiful quote in her book. And by the way, if you haven't read The Beauty Myth, which I didn't up to about four years ago, life-changing book. But here's a quote from Naomi Wolf. No matter how outwardly liberated a woman is, she will be oppressed as long as she is consumed by trying to contain her body. That quote, sister, is everything, <laughs> like everything. It's posted everywhere on my device and on my wall. And what Naomi wrote is actually supported by research in science. Research shows that taking up space with our body can influence the confidence and power we feel in real life, in our, like in our mind, in the space we have in our body. Research on power pose demonstrate the exact notion that when we embrace our fullness, we impact our mind and our confidence. Just a note here, if you don't know what power pose is, it's a posture, a stance that people mentally associate with powerful. A great example of a power pose is what we call the Wonder Woman pose, right? And if you don't know, Google it, the Wonder Woman pose, where a woman is stand up with a large stance with both of her hands on her hips with a straight face. That's a power pose. A power pose is that stance where we take our full space with our full body. Amy Cuddy is a PhD and a researcher in leadership psychology, and her research found that those who sat and were in high power pose felt more power and perform better in mock interview than those who didn't. Thus, by commending a powerful stance, embracing our fullness physically, we can make ourselves more powerful. Crazy, right? If you're waiting for someone to come over and say, hey girl, it's okay to be in a larger body to take space. Unfortunately, this is never going to happen, at least in this lifetime. <laughs> Perhaps for the next generation, if we do our work. Don't wait for someone to come and say, it's okay to be in a larger body and embrace your space. You have to make this decision for yourself. 
So what's keeping most women from making the decision to embrace their fullness? One thing, their thoughts, the thoughts that they have been socialized to from a very young age that we also call diet culture. That's it. That's all that's stopping us from embracing our fullness. If you want to work on these thoughts, these long held beliefs that are keeping you wearing the black outfit instead of beautiful, bright color outfit and finally ditch dye culture, that's the work we do inside Conquer and Thrive. We teach you the skill set, the tools that you need so you can trade the I can't, I shouldn't, I'm sorry for hell yes and hell no. We help you become confident. We help you liberate yourself from the black outfit to enjoy your body and your life unconditionally. When women do this work, the consequence, yes, is within us physically taking our space, but it goes far beyond that. It has consequences in our career, in our finances, in our businesses, So if you want to do this work, come over and join me in Conquer and Thrive. And I'll see you on the other side. Now, sister, I love you. And I hope for you that you will embrace your fullness and wear bright color clothes that make you take your full space in life. I look forward to see you on the next episode. Hey you, if you enjoy listening to this show, you have to come and check Conquer and Thrive. It's my monthly coaching program that comes with expert courses that will show you exactly how to take this life-changing work and apply it into your own life. We teach you how to change your mindset, eat intuitively, and master body confidence. That you've decided to stop dieting today or years ago, Conquer and Thrive will help you take this knowledge deeper into real life practices. It comes with access to me as your coach and my team of experts. Join us by simply going to www.stephaniedodzie.com forward slash join. I can't wait to meet you inside our Conquer and Thrive community. I'll see you on the other side.